What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are working on the rollback. And this is a 99 C3500 HD. It is the 15,000 pound one. And uh, what we're doing is we're gonna be doing two videos on this. We're gonna have a wheel bearing video on here and then we're gonna be doing the AC compressor on the next video. But the first one we're gonna be doing wheel bearings. I know it's a little windy today, so sorry about that. But I figure I'd show y'all how to do this because I uh, haven't seen any videos on it yet. I'm going to rotate this. And it's got a lot of play in the uh, rotor. I don't know how well y'all can hear this over the road noise. But moves a good bit. First thing we'll do is there should be a hole right there on one spot of the, little, the half piece of the rotor. Where the the lugs bolt onto losing a train of thought on that but there uh, should be a little hole in here and that's to get this center cap right here the nut protector off of there and show you how we do this and set y'all up first off we have a long punch and we'll push it through here and then there's like a lip on this cover and we're gonna tap on there a little bit Should have popped off. There we go. But you can see how it's got that lip on there. I just caught the end of that and hit it and it popped right off. Put everything in the wheel cover over here because it does have the metal wheel covers. Now, up inside of here, there's going to be a cotter pin and a 32 millimeter nut. This shouldn't have a lot of torque on it, and behind the nut is a washer and a bearing, but that's not gonna have a lot of torque on it. it only torques to 12 foot pounds. And we'll get to all that whenever I get ready to put it back together. But next thing I'm gonna do is actually take this caliper off. And to do this, there's a little set screw right here. There's an Allen head, uh, I think it's like a seven millimeter, but take that out that only torques 15 once you take it off this little cover comes off and then you have to tap a uh, like friction pin out and that's why i got a hammer again but let me grab my seven millimeter and we'll get to taking all this off actually it's six millimeter It's going to be stripped out. See if I can get my seven in there. All right. Well, let me figure out something to get this out. I may have to attach a pair of vice grips to it and put it in, and I'll see if we can get another one of those. I forgot I had these stripped Allen bolt sockets. Right there. It's hammer on in. That's too big. That's too small. That's just right. Let's see if this will get it out. Like I said, they only torque to uh, 15 foot pounds. Now we're going to 
hammer this out. There you go. It's got like a little spring piece on there. It just sits on top. Just like that. Now we'll pull the rotor off, or caliper off. Now hold the front pad when you do this because it will come out if you're not careful. And we're just going to lean it up over here against the tie rods. Luckily, that uh, pad is staying. We're going to take the back pad off. Sit to the side. Now we're going to come over to the front and go ahead and take this nut off. So, should be a cotter pin right here. I'm going to push that down, pull it out, and then I'm going to thread that off. Got a pair of cutters. I'm going to put a new pin in here anyway, so if I happen to cut it, not a big deal. But this one come out really easy. Making sure that it wasn't like really loose. Like I said, you can see how loose it was. It's uh, 12 foot pounds that it calls for. Here's your washer. Here is your front bearing. It is the smaller bearing. Now, I'm going to thread this back on. Put about four or five threads. Now we're going to pull back until you grab it. You feel the nut catch the back bearing and then you can pull it and it'll pull the whole bearing and everything off and seal and all that stuff. And there it is. Now these seals are a little different. The middle one, which you can see it's cut anyway, the little inside of it comes out. And the way you do this is you actually put the seal up on here and around that first, around the spindle part first, and then you uh, put the rotor on thought it was weird very first time I ever did one of these but that's the way I've always was shown how to do them so that's the way we keep doing them all right get this heavy rotor out of the way if you get it dirty you'll have to clean it off anyway so Here is our rotor, and there's a race right here, and then there's another one down there. And we're gonna use this this long punch that I was using, and we're gonna go down in here, and we're gonna tap this uh, race out on both sides, and we're replacing both of those. Now that little one is gonna be a little harder because you don't have much of a lip, so I'll lean it against this back edge and I tap and I just go to the opposite side and I just work my way back and forth and it came right out there's your race right there and now I'm going to flip it over the same thing but this one right here isn't going to come all the way out uh, once you get it to where it's about flush you will have to either set it up on something just so you can get it rest way out I just put it on the face of the rotors and then hammer it out or you can set it up on the side and finish tapping it out I'm about 
not flush. Yeah. Yep, I'm flush. Next step is I'm going to clean this right here off with some brake cleaner and get all that old grease off and we'll put some new grease on there and I'm going to do the same thing with the inside of here because that's your grease and we got new red grease and I'm going to clean off this reluctor wheel and you can see all the metal debris on the magnet for the wheel speed sensor I'm going to clean all that off too. So let me clean all this stuff off when I come back there'll be new grease on here new grease inside and I'll show you how we will tap in these bearings uh, the bearing races I should say we got the rotor and the inside stuff pretty clean and here is your race right here you have to buy the races and the bearings separate on these and here's your part number 26823 that's for your inner race and there it is and I'm using this Lyle Baron race installer, seal installer, whatever you want to call it. Just kind of pick out the one that fits in there the best. in there just a little bit to get it started and make sure that it's straight. When you hear that like sharp pinging noise you know that you got it seated down all the way. And we're just gonna do the same thing to the opposite side. Take it out. Just about fail. No, don't do that. Here is your inner race. This is a nap part, not a sponsor. That's who we used. Make sure I'm showing you all right. Uh, PBR one five two four three. Again, find the one that fits it the best. Absolutely great, but should be good. We'll go on that one. Don't take much to put these in. Now, the next thing we gotta do is, God, I know it's so windy today, sorry about that, y'all. The next thing I gotta do is I'm get to pack our bearings with uh, grease. Where are my bearings? So, this is your inner bearing right here, 26884. This is your outer bearing. Oh, I know it's a little dirty. 
15103-SVP. That is another Napa, not a sponsor. But then, i find your seal. It's right here. That's your new seal, uh, 5682. And like I said, comes in two pieces. That is the new one. may take y'all inside if I can get this seal back in the box and show y'all how I'm going to pack these bearings just so we can get out of the wind for a little bit. First off I'm going to start off with a new pair of gloves. I'm going to try to keep as much dirt out of this as possible. I know these gloves ain't cheap. They're about almost 30 something dollars a box but god these are the best gloves I've found that I can use and they're I don't know, sort of I don't want to show you the box though. These are the gloves I use. They're called Raven. I get them at O'Reilly. It's not a sponsor, but they work really well. I mean, I rarely tear one of these gloves, and if I do, it's probably like doing something really uh, sharp, catching it on a tool or something like that. So. Not often I tear these gloves up. Trash, set them over there for now. So, got high temp grease right here. This uh, disc brake wheel bearing grease. So, take some, put it in the palm of your hand. Take your bearing. I, I kind of hold it like I'm going to hold a guitar pick, you know, like that. Get my hand and I just push just right on the edge. See how that's going in? Just right on the edge. And you keep doing that till you start seeing it come out the top of the bearing. Uh, once I get some up here, I'll show you what it looks like. It may take it a minute, but once you get it going and it's already through, see how it's coming out the top right there? You now, once you have it like that, you just want to rotate it and it'll start coming out a lot quicker because you're working it in there. But we'll go around, do that, and then once we get it where it's coming out between every one of the bearings, you just take a little bit and you're going to kind of smash it in between the bearings against the cage right here. And you should be good and just do that to both of them. But I'm not going to bore y'all by doing both of them. Just sitting here showing y'all me smacking my hand with a bearing. So, but that's pretty much it. Whenever I get through, I'll show you uh, me putting grease around the outside of it, though. When you get through, your bearing should look something like that. Just put it all over the outside of it. And I set the other bearing on the back side, the bigger one. Uh, got the race just kind of sitting on there. It ain't really like, hammered in, so... Go around, tap it in, make sure it seats down, and you'll hear it change. Alright, now, here's our seal, and I was told flat side goes towards the back, and it's going to be a little tight. Just because it is a new seal, I have to set y'all down so I can use it with both hands. Alright, right, there's that. Put my grease back where I wipe it off. Wipe off my gloves. Put that on. Got the grease. I did put grease inside of the rotor too. Spray this rotor off one more time, get it clean, and probably wipe my hands off again just to be safe. Let's get this heavy rotor up on here. Set it down for a second. Let it reposition. Back one on. 
lighting the front one on, back y'all up some. I'm going to got to lift up a little bit. about 10 times just to be safe. Alright, so I don't think my cotter pin is going to line up, but once you get to this point, what you can do is, depending on how far off it is, if it is just a hair off and it's on the back side where you got to loosen it you can loosen it up just a hair but if it's where you got to go just a little bit forward you can tighten it down just a little bit to get it into there now if it's like a probably like a full flat off um, I would say take it back out and retorque it a couple times to see if you can get closer to the flat on there because uh, you don't want it too tight because if you make it too tight it's going to wear it prematurely and if it's too late too loose you're going to have too much uh, play in it now you're supposed to have uh, 10 to 20 thousandths of play on this thing but this one feels pretty good actually but i gotta tighten mine just a hair so i'm gonna just go a little tighter just to get that cotter pin in it ain't much that I gotta go. I think that should be it right there. the dust cap before I put it on there. Uh, don't go crazy and pack it full. Just put a little bit in there because the heat will allow it to like soften up a little bit and it will kind of get into there a little bit better. So let me go do that real quick. Alright, I'm going to put the cap on now. I'm just going to start it. And I should be able to get my hammer in here to put it in. I gotta go around it. Alright, there we go. I'm 
wash the front of this rotor off. Been pretty clean. Scots do have handprints on it. See how dirty it was. Yeah. Flip it over and then we'll do the back side while we're at it. Back side wasn't nowhere near as dirty just because we already cleaned it off a good bit. Set your brake pad back up inside of here. Let me show y'all. Get in there and kind of crank down on it the best I could but we're going to replace that whenever the new one comes in anyway right here but that normally torques to 15 foot pounds just so everybody knows and that's pretty much it for doing one of these um, like I said, this is on tow truck so this is the bigger one they do make a light duty uh, bearings it's got a different rotor style on here I think the pads are the same. I think the California pads are the same, but the rotors made different on the light duty ones. I think it's the 8,500 pound and under ones, and then the 15,000 pound uh, trucks, they use this heavy duty style right here, which makes sense since it's a tow truck, so it's probably the home, should be the heavy duty style. But like I said, this is pretty much putting one of these on. Um, for do both of them, I think it's like three hours is what it calls for. But if y'all got any questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comments section. Uh, I'll get to them as soon as possible. Um, thank y'all for all your support on all the media sites, uh, Patreon, Instagram, everything. I'm trying to keep in touch with everybody. 
that I can on the comments and everything. I'm starting to get more comments, starting to get more views, uh, all that good stuff, which is helping out the channel grow tremendously. Uh, I think just uh, less than a month ago, I was under 3,000. And, I mean, I was like about mid 3,000s and now I'm over 4,000. I'm almost at 4,300 now. So thank y'all for that. But um, if y'all got any, need anything on any vehicle, not just one pertaining to this, let me know. I can help out as much as possible. But if you like the video, hit the like, subscribe button and notification bell like always. And y'all remember, torque this tight and y'all have a great day.